cards in box. Now we're done with the, all of the narrow stuff and we're going a little bit back in time, specifically to the resurgence of the Rebel Empire. Now, the Rebellion starts off with the Cartvelian Empire into the second coming of the Cartvelian Empire into the resurgence of the Cartvelian Empire, which happens right here. Um, at this point, though, it's much larger than what the Cartvelian Empire was originally, and it's now with certain alien races and other alliances, or, like, with defectants of other alliances. So, this happens on Crateris, a 31, I believe. Mercury's uh, only known moon thing. Uh, though Crateris 31 is much farther away from Mercury right now, it still it still belongs as a position of those who owned Mercury, which was another dispute between the Slavellian Alliance over here, who have smokestacks and then a small outpost on here, and then the Alliance of the Orient, which are sneakily using the Rebellion. Now, the Rebellion here is more geared against the Alliance of the Orient, but also would like to take out the Slavellian Alliance. Though the Alliance of the Orient captured some of the uh, Rebellion, so I might as well point that out now. Uh, Orient, Slavs, and then the Rebellion. Now, these, are ca these men are captured, so yeah, basically these guys are being led around, because this is a large caravan, pretty much, around the moon of Crateris, to employ the... okay, actually... To employ a very, very large super weapon called the Immolation Beam, which has parts for it spread throughout the caravan. If you want to read more about what the Immolation Beam first came from and why it's so important, check down in the history lesson down there. Because we're having those again. Yay. So, without further ado, let's set this up. Okay, and uh, let's see, did I get it even? 13, 13, 12. Close enough. Auto food spawn. Ugh, excuse me, I'm just coming over a cold. Now, we wait. And instantly the Alliance of the Orient goes out and surprise jumps the uh, first caravan. The Alliance of the Orient really wants the immolation beam with its fight for the Slave or against the Slavellian Empire. The Immolation Beam is big. Now, imagine a weapon capable of first lighting and putting in, making an area a light, and large sweeping fires. This thing has. Uh, see my mouse cursor, which has been on the screen. Apologies. Yeah. Okay. Just sweep like that, and just pretty much cut an entire line out from the middle of this, and that area would be raging. A flame for a long long time uh, and with newer technology with technology that was developed excuse me for cracking my knuckle with technology that was developed back when the immolation beam was first used they now have the technology they've again read that because it's interesting but they now have the technology to not only light this place aflame but to keep it alight for more than 10 years that's a decade of an area just burning which is ridiculous and the Slavellian Empire instantly goes into indulgence and starts destroying what they owned. Uh, I do have it on automatic food spawn, correct? Yeah. I need to take my mouse pointer off on correct. Though the Slavellian Alliance has eaten away most of everything, they're still the strongest race right now. Actually, yeah, beyond info. And there's a uh, nice war going on down here between the Alliance of the Orient and the resurgence of the rebellion the rebels have resurged quite a few many times the reason that this one is so important though is because normally whenever they come back up or whenever they're a problem they don't scout out or they don't carry parts for the immolation beam that's the key of this if you haven't told if you haven't been able to tell already big words end up uh, fire which is generally what humans try to look for they try to get fire that's what we tried to do earlier like in our life and while they still have the lowest population, the Alliance of the Orient look like they are pretty tooled up to go. <laughs> and, um, high population, the Rebellion, have pulled a ton of men out of nowhere. These caravans apparently are just massive. 
but I think I see an extinction coming along here. They are pretty much out of food in the area. I guess if they can make those couple of food pylons, then that'll save them. But really, I think they're going to have to let the Orient just deal with themselves. The way that the Orient's food is grouped up, they shouldn't really have much of a chance to um, survive otherwise. A large extinction did just hit the Slavellian Empire, though, as uh, their outposts on Craterus 13, or 1, 3, 1A. Ah, jeez, I didn't really do my research for this. You know, the one moon slash technically sun of, oh, that's something I can talk about. Yeah, the one moon slash technically sun of um, Mercury. Now, Mercury doesn't have a moon, technically. It's got a sun. So these guys are fighting on top of a sun, which is why the immolation beam is being manufactured here. Basically, the only way that they could have treat they could have made it work, not the uh, whole burning over time thing, but the the ability to make such a large beam required uh required fusion in order to like move it around and such. So it required fusion to make heat and then to condense that heat into light, which was all fine and dandy, of course, until and uh we're getting an oriental extinction here. Um, it was all fine and dandy until... Oh, look, we have no power. So they had to go to the sun to get things for fusion and to basically study this because... Oh, oh, that might be the Alliance of the Orient dead. No, they're up in the uh, southeast. They've got a small colony fighting the Slavellian Alliance off. But, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the Rebellion... They don't get technology like everyone else does. It doesn't work that way. They get the technology they can scrounge and then have to figure all the rest out for itself. Now, the first immolation beam was huge and it was hooked up on Earth and it was rooted to the ground, so they're making a more portable version of one that they could mount to a space shuttle, say. But, however, they did just suffer an extinction with one of their caravans leading them to doom, I'm guessing. Which is kind of cool if they travel by caravan. But the Slavellian alliance just never loses, apparently. Because they are they are taking this one Mercurian moon, the satellite, the Mercurian satellite. Which is kind of amazing. I didn't really expect them to. Oh, it looks like this is the Oriental extinction. Oh no, I think they might survive. Oh no, yeah, they're dead. I don't want to call it for sure yet. Four are alive. That means there's another small colony somewhere. But yeah, the host there's ho very much many hostilities on this. Well, it's the sun, so of course it's hostile. So why would the Orient and Slavs be fighting for this? Who would want to live on, well, a place that's made of pretty much magma, and with nuclear fusion going on constantly? Well, the Slavellians, like you saw earlier, there was a power plant. They are using this to create energy to ship to Venus, where all of their technology happens. Which is good. I mean, they need something to power all of those machines. And they're definitely not getting it from... Well, they don't have enough. There aren't... Oh, yeah, there's the uh, Oriental Extinction. Boom. They just couldn't take the heat. Can't take the heat. Stay out of the mercurial sun. Um, but, yeah, no. Really, there are lots of volcanoes on Venus. Uh, I don't know how many of them are active. Don't ask me that. I am not the best astronomy student. But they're all, the temperature's pretty bad. There's lightning everywhere and lots of volcanoes, so it's pretty harsh already. But it's much harder. Oh, it's much harder to power an entire planet off of lightning storms. So powering an entire planet via a, st a small sun that they can manage is really nice. And so you can see why they're trying to do it. And they're pretty successful we've got a, a small rebel colony that just got split up down in the south or the equatorial not the meridial south not the equatorial south Ugh. excuse me though we're reaching 10 minutes and uh things are looking pretty swell but to be honest i don't see I can't see the, re the Rebellion dying out too easily at this point. I think they might just wait out the Slavellian Empire's... Just... The, the Slavellian Empire has a really, really easy time of exhausting all of their resources. So I think that's what they're waiting for.
<laughs> Though Luther had some food spot on, they should be fine. There are a lot of them, so if one extinction happens, at least at least a couple extinctions are gonna happen to wipe out the Slovelian Empire. Ooh, a small battle we see as the uh, Slovelian Empire is very very quickly ripped away by another convoy of uh, rebels. Though it looks like these guys are gonna drop. Oh no! Did another food spawn over here? Yep. <laughs> oh, that was lucky. They got saved. They're all in the. Oh, these guys are dead. This rebellion colony actually might die. This might be the spell the end of the immolation beam. Because fire thermal warfare was outlawed way back when. Because, well, it's awful. Uh, that's the main reason. But, um, uh, excuse the background noise. But, even with thermal warfare being outlawed, yeah, the Slovelians could still use it. I mean... Technically, it's only outlawed on Earth, because that's where the law was made. Uh, so, if they ever have the need to quell an alien uprising of which they created, which has got to be something they have to look out for. I mean, oh, there goes one small colony. So, we've really got only one colony of the Rebellion left. There, oh, there's that last convoy. Yeah? Consider my train of thought completely destroyed. Uh, uh, sorry, a friend came over and stuff. Uh, what was I talking about? Holy crap, what happened? A large extinction happened of the, uh, rebel group. To the point where there's, uh, one left. I'll have to check the video footage, just make sure that I captured that extinction, because... Yeah, this guy is just... If he manages to take out that one rebel troop, then, uh, he's done. We're done here. That'll be a nice short 12-minute episode. Actually, I think this is a decent length for what we're normally at. Holy crap. <laughs> this is one guy, he can't, he can't grow any bigger because he's constantly being fought and just eating to survive. That's amazing. I've gotta wonder, how is the uh, blue guy surviving? Do some survive off of eating other ones? I'm just, I'm just questioning the exact ways that the game works. Oh, okay, I think this is it. Regardless, this, yeah, the Slavellian Alliance has officially destroyed, pretty much completely destroyed the uh, rebellion. It looks like the emulation beam is theirs. Oh, jeez. I can only imagine what they're going to do with that immolation beam, considering they're trying to destroy Mercury at the moment. Uh, they're well, they're trying to fight the Alliance of the Orient on Mercury, and more so than that, they're also they also could contest Earth, which makes me a little scared. I'll have to look into this. Well, this was the third resurgence of. Oh, the resurgence, the third uprising of the Air Rebellion. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, favorite if you want. Leave a comment. They're all cool. And, uh, I'll pretty much see you guys next time. We're about to be done here. As we watch the fireworks up in the top corner. Uh, I wish life could be so simple that just fireworks... Sometimes I get caught up in thinking that this, what I'm talking about, what I'm saying is actually reality. As opposed to, what it really is is storytelling, I guess. Oh, come on. Did I turn automatic food spawn off? Yeah, I did. But yeah, this is just me telling a story. I hope you guys like it. It is definitely a fun thing for me to do. And as the sun slowly eats up all of the fuel that it has... Mercury's one and only moon will have been destroyed. This is annoying. Whatever. I'm gonna end it here. Thank you guys so much. Until next time.